One of the earliest computers was the ENIAC. This computer was nothing like personal computers today. It weighed 27 tons and at 9 meters wide by 17 meters long, it took up an entire room. It made a lot of noise and emitted incredible amounts of heat because of the 17,000 vacuum tubes and sealed glass containers that conducted electrical currents. Though it was a great invention at the time, it cost a lot to use and it was nothing more than a gigantic calculator which we can now hold in our hands. This computer led to the development of personal computers such as the Apple II in 1977 and the IBM PC in 1981. All these developments led to what we know today as computers. Nowadays, computers can do almost anything. They can do everything from edit and produce videos and home movies to animation. You can play realistic looking games on your computers, communicate in seconds to anyone in the world, even watch TV. All of this is great, but what makes up what we call the computer and what does everything do? One of the most important, if not the most important component of a computer is what we call the processor. I'm sure all of you have seen or heard of the Intel commercials or computer commercials talking about different processors with different speeds. These speeds are measured in what we call gigahertz. One gigahertz is equal to about one billion calculations per second. A calculation is the math that the computer does to open a program, run a game, move your mouse, cursor, anything like that. The faster your computer's speed, the more it can do and the faster it can do it. However, with faster speeds, you get more heat being produced by these chips. Because of this heat, you can't really see the processor when you open up your computer case because of what we call a heat sink. These heat sinks usually have a small fan over the top of them. When the fan blows down, the fins circulate and vent the air around the processor, cooling it down, making the processor run more efficiently. As a little side note, computers like it cool. If things get too hot, that's when computers start to crash, overheat, or even completely ruin themselves if they get too hot. This is usually why computers have two or three fans. Some are even cooled by water. This allows them to run efficiently and get the speed from the processors that you or your parents paid for. Another important part of your computer are the expansion slots. While some computers have more than others, all computers have them. As you can see in the smaller picture on the top left hand side of this video, the little gold teeth that are at the bottom of the card fit into the little slots on the larger picture on the bottom right hand of the screen. This card can be anything from a graphics card to a sound card or even extra ports to plug things into such as printers, microphones, scanners, even TV tuners, just about anything. Something else that is absolutely crucial to the running of your computer is what we call RAM or memory. RAM stands for, and write this down because your worksheet has this word in it, random access memory. This means that data can be written to or taken off of this memory stick. It is only temporary storage when the computer shuts off, all the data will be deleted from memory. RAM is used when you run programs on your computer. Those programs, when you start them up, are loaded into the RAM which allows the computer to access those programs quickly, which means that the game you're playing or report you're writing gets done much faster. However, once you close the program or turn off the computer, the data is deleted from memory so that other programs can be run. If you're running too many programs on your computer, the computer moves slowly because more and more of that memory is being used. Eventually, if you keep opening programs, your computer will crash because it doesn't have enough memory to handle everything that you're throwing at it. Another important component of the computer that you can actually see from the outside are your CD and DVD drives. Each of these are what we call removable media drives. This basically means that you can place data on CDs or DVDs which are burned by these drives and then take them to other computers or store data for later use. CD and DVD drives can either be CDRWs or DVDRWs 
or they can also be a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. A CD or DVD-RW basically means the drive will be able to both read and write onto CDs and DVDs. A CD or DVD-ROM means that the drive can only read CDs and DVDs. ROM, by the way, make sure you write this down because this is going to be on your worksheets too, means read-only memory, meaning that the data can only be read, it can't be changed or deleted. As another side note, CDs and DVDs hold different amounts of data. CDs, short for compact discs, can hold about 700 megabytes of data, which amounts to about 80 minutes of music. DVDs, short for digital versatile disc, hold about 4.7 gigabytes of data, or about seven times as much as a CD. Now you don't have to keep track of all this right now because we'll learn more about both of these technologies later on in our storage unit. Lastly, we come to the devices that you use to interact with your computer. The first type of devices are input devices. An input device is basically just a device that allows you to give input into the computer. These include keyboards, game controllers, microphones, scanners, and other things. The next set of devices, as you probably guessed, are output devices. These are devices that receive output from the computer and either display it, give you information or feedback, and other things as well. These devices include everything from printers to speakers to monitors and many other devices. 